from Exodus 20, chapters 1, excuse me, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship for them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 19. Turn to the front of the red hymn and we will read in half verse. The heavens de declare the glory of God. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their song has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. Where God has pitched a tent for the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs out to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and it is the soul. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear and he is light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter are than honey, and than honey from the home. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Bless me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 1, 18-25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will form. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and 
foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weaknesses is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel reading for this Sunday comes from the second chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning with the 13th verse. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables, making a loop of cords. He drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I enjoyed this past week of following uh, the Voiceville boys as they uh, made their run toward, uh, toward states and uh, enjoyed uh, watching them out on the basketball court uh, yesterday and on, on Thursday. But in thinking about sports in general, can you imagine what sports would be like if there were no rules? Like, just think about it. Like, the basketball game I attended yesterday, the uh, sectional final, just imagine if you decided just any basket you wanted could be any point you wanted. If there were no fouls, there was no travel, you didn't have to worry about dribbling. Just imagine your, your Packers, let's say Aaron Rodgers, so threw a beautiful touchdown pass to Greg Jennings, but I just decided because I wanted to that, that it was really a Bears touchdown instead. Imagine like a board game like Monopoly or Scrabble. If, if you play Monopoly, you just decide any time you wanted, you could take hard place and throw 25 hotels on there with no money. Right? It, just would, it wouldn't make, without rules, without boundaries, things become chaos. And chaos, most of the time, is no fun. Most of the time. That's why we have rules in our sports and in our games. Because when we play within a set of rules, we have fun and it enriches the game. It enriches our time together. We hear this morning from Exodus. The Ten Commandments. Rules sent from God. And sometimes when we see these commandments, all we hear is the you shall not. You shall not. And it, and it kind of bumps us out. You know, like the, like when, when my when my parents were told me I wasn't allowed to have a cookie, it made me really want to have a cookie, right? You tell me something I can't do or can't have, I want to do it and have it even more. And when I can't have it, it kind of bumps me out. Like you said, you know, PB can't have bacon. I'd be like, oh, I love bacon. Sometimes we see these commandments and, and they kind of bum us out. We focus too much on the you shall not. But in reality, these commandments that God gives us is a gift. Think about them as a way to manage the playing field of life. That the Ten Commandments give us boundaries and guidance on how to live life so that our life might be fulfilling. It starts, of course, with keeping God at the center. You shall have no other gods. You shall not take the Lord your God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. These commandments help us to keep our life oriented towards God. But then all the rest of the commandments help us keep our lives safe and enriching. Because if it's okay to just kill and steal and covet and do whatever else we want, well, that's not good for the whole. That's not good for our lives. The commandments help give us a framework so that we might live life fully. 
we might live life as God intended, with God at the center and love and care of the neighbor prominent in all that we do. But there's another reason we have these commandments. A reason that we, we didn't realize until Jesus came into our lives. These commandments show us that we need God in our lives. That we need Jesus Christ because when we look at these commandments, we look within this framework, these rules that God has given us, we see that we break the rules. We do sometimes bear false witness against our neighbor. We do covet what our neighbor has. My wife got to have bacon at a buffet yesterday, and I was very envious. And very, very, she actually sent me a picture of her plate of bacon. That's the kind of wife I have. We do cut it. We do kill. Sometimes, not with our hands, but with our words. We do commit adultery. We don't make God our only God. We don't remember the Sabbath day. We break these rules that God, this framework that God has given us, just as, as in sports, people are trying to break the rules all the time, and that promise I won't mention Ryan Brown. But, when we break these rules, we see that we cannot save ourselves. Because the only way that God will allow us into heaven is if we follow these, these commandments exactly, but we don't. So God has sent Jesus, the Son of God, into our lives to save us. Because when we see these commandments and we see the ways that we break them, we despair of our own life. But Christ comes and says, I have taken your sin from you, and I have given you my everlasting life. These commandments show us that we need God, that we cannot justify ourselves, we cannot save ourselves by our works, but that Christ saves us by his work, by his death on the cross, by his resurrection. We are saved through him. So these commandments show us and remind us of our need for our everyday need for Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit enter our hearts that we might try to live as best we can in this framework, in this gift of rules that God has given us. But most especially, may the Holy Spirit remind us that we need Jesus, who by grace saves us and brings us to everlasting life. For that we can say thanks be to God. Amen.